Hello lovely internet strangers. Please forgive the quality of my voice in this video because I was out late last night dancing and drinking and chatting and having a really good time, but I did not make the best decisions regarding trying to talk over really loud music and drinking too much. My voice suffers, but I'm here to welcome you to the next episode of The Anti-Feminist Diaries. This is a video series where I tell you stories from my life and I hope that you will find them interesting and compelling and relatable. Today's topic, losing a friend to the culture war. So I already talked in the series about getting dumped for my political beliefs. That had happened at the end of 2016. The story takes place in 2017. So let me set the context. This is a person who I worked with. We were getting closer and closer. We would hang out just the two of us, get drinks, catch up because she had left the company. A few months prior, I had come out as no longer a feminist, no longer on the left, no longer a social justice warrior type to one of my female friends. And she didn't stay me. So I was feeling a little bit encouraged. I was feeling a little bit emboldened that maybe I could come out to my female friends about this and that I wouldn't be shunned. But it was naive of me, I suppose, to think that. So the story begins in June 2017 on a night when I met up with her for drinks to catch up. At this point, it had been a couple of months since I had met my lover, who is also a refugee from the left. I had connected with him a couple of months before. I was really Really excited about having met him. And this friend I was meeting for drinks was someone I always talked to about my dating life. She knew about my non-monogamous relationship. I wanted to update her on my dating life and she wanted the dating life update. And you know, I could have just told her, hey, I met this guy. He's really cool. Blah, blah, the usual. That wasn't the full story because so much of what we connected on was our journey away from the left, was all these YouTube channels that we both watched and the emails that we were exchanging about content. The reason why I was just so glad to have found this person and to have them in my life was because I didn't feel alone anymore. The only way that I could convey that to her would be to tell her how my beliefs had changed. I told her that I wasn't a feminist anymore and she didn't really, you know, understand what I meant. The usual kind of, oh, do you just mean you don't want to use the label? It's so difficult when you don't have the same frame of reference. You haven't consumed the same content. It's like, oh, let me catch you up. Can you go watch like 20 videos about all the things that I know? So I could just tell by the way she was looking at me and also the way she was like asking the questions, you know, trying to like give me the out to explain myself in a way where I would somehow like still be a good person because how can you be a good person without being a feminist? So at that point I was not a full on anti-feminist. I didn't have a stance where I was like actively opposed to feminism. I was more just not a feminist anymore and I had a lot of problems with feminism and all I was looking for for was just acceptance, tolerance. I wasn't looking to make her think that feminism is shit and she shouldn't be a feminist anymore. I was just telling her, you know, what I gone through, what I believe so that she could understand why this person that I had met had become so important to me in such a short period of time. Because this is what friends do, especially female friends. You talk about the people that you're dating. You talk about why you like them. You talk about why people are important to you. And suddenly I wasn't able to do that. The thing was, she seemed to take it okay, all things considered. You know, she didn't yell at me she didn't tell me I was a bad person. Like, it seemed like she was trying to understand. You know, we went on to talk about other things. You know, we parted ways, friendly, and all of that. So, you know, I felt good about how things had gone. That was my first mistake. So the next day she emailed me and she sent me a link to a YouTube video and she wrote, this popped up on my newsfeed and reminded me of our conversation last night. And it was a video from Cat Black. So I can't actually show you the video because she took it down for some reason. It was responding to all these videos that were coming out of women talking about how they used to be a feminist and now they were an anti-feminist. So some additional context. Although I now tweet exclusively from the 8th Square, there is still a personal Twitter account that I used to use. I since went through and scrubbed all of those things, which you're about to find out why. I was dipping my toe out there ever since I was going on this ideological journey. Some things about libertarianism maybe or classical liberalism, just things I felt were reasonable. I wasn't tweeting out like dank memes. So about a week after we had drinks, I tweeted about the Anita Sarkeesian incident at VidCon. And I just tweeted out an article, which I will link below. It was an article in Polygon. Oh my God, it was just the worst. It was just trash. I mean, 
mean, I think everyone talked about that article. See, I deleted the tweet, so I can't actually tell you what I said, but I said something to the effect of, you know, can't believe Polygon would write this hit piece defending like known con artist Anita Sarkeesian. And I feel like that's a pretty indisputable fact. She's a known con artist, but I forgot that feminists don't agree. See, I made the mistake of thinking I was dealing with my friend, but I was not dealing with my friend. I was dealing with someone who was possessed by feminist ideology. And when I hear ideologues ramble on, all I hear is the chattering of a multitude of demons. And so it has no effect on me, really, because... Mm -hmm because it's just the automatic output of an algorithmic machine. She replied, was like wanting to know what I was talking about, you know, like she didn't agree. My boyfriend jumped in. My boyfriend's tone, especially online, can be like really abrasive. He likes to have debates and not everyone likes to have debates. Most people don't like to have debates. Women really don't like to have debates. Women who are really, really, really high on agreeableness don't like to have debates. She wasn't really trying to initiate a debate. She was more just trying to ask her friend questions. And so I understood like why he jumped jumped in because that's just how he is. But I kind of had a little tiff with him about it. It was hard because I, I agreed with what he was saying because he also said some things to me directly where he was kind of like, your friend's being retarded. She shouldn't bring this up if she doesn't want to actually have a discussion about it. And you know, like when I thought about it some more and especially after we had a subsequent DM conversation, which I'm about to share with you, I kind of realized he was right. And that was like really difficult to reconcile. So let's get to the DM conversation. Now I sent her a couple of videos to back up my points about Anita. The video from her lecture from 2010 where she's saying that she doesn't like playing video games because she doesn't want to go around shooting people. And then I sent her a video of like a roundup of different ways in which she's known to be a con artist and a hypocrite. She said, hi, so I didn't mean to start a debate or get your boyfriend involved. I guess when I watched the video, it didn't seem to me like she was lying about her identity or anything. She said at one point that she played games as a kid and another point that she wasn't in fandom or a big gamer, which to me is different. I just related because I played games as a kid. Mario Kart, Nancy Drew computer games, but I wouldn't call myself a gamer. And I think the cherry picking argument rubbed me the wrong way because that's exactly what that video did to her. Personally, I got a lot out of her videos. I haven't seen all of them, but I think a lot of them are super smart. It's so easy when someone's been making content for years to find mistakes and point them out, but I don't think that means that she has bad intentions. And if someone wants to dispute it, they make their own video, which is what happened. So say la vie. Even if she is exaggerating or cherry picking for profit, it. Well, a shit ton of people do that, including a lot of anti-feminists. That's so much of what the internet is now, unfortunately. So if you're taking issue with it in general, I feel you. But otherwise, it just seems biased. Anyway, I kind of went down this rabbit hole and thought this woman had a really articulate, balanced response. And then she linked me to Liana Kay's video about the Sargon VidCon incident and Anita Sarkeesian. She said, you probably already saw it since you're more involved, but I think she explained the situation well for someone like me. Anyway, these things are hard because there's literal footage of what happened, but whether or not there's an objective truth Truth, we're always going to perceive things based on what we want slash expect slash need to see. We filter through our individual experiences and all that, and nobody is immune to that. Not you or your boyfriend or me or Gandhi, though he's pretty chill probably. And that's kind of frustrating, but that's also what makes human beings so fascinating and awesome. Am I right? All right, that's all. I just spent the last five hours responding to people on Twitter and I'm a little delirious. Hope you're well. So you can see what she did here. She basically was like, oh, I didn't want to have this debate in a public forum because I don't like the criticism or the pushback I'm getting from your boyfriend. So I'll slide into your DMs. There's no need for you to respond because you know, we're done talking about this. I've had the final word on it. Like really? You're gonna say all that shit and I'm not gonna say anything back? Like you're just gonna act like that's it? No. Like, I'm gonna respond to that. So I said, read her being a gamer upon rewatching the video. I can see maybe it wasn't clear. Here's that black and white clip in full. It's from 2010 when she was doing her master's degree, and I believe she had just launched the feminist frequency website, but she hadn't done her Kickstarter for the Tropes versus Women series yet. She was not yet making the claim that she was a gamer and therefore an insider with an expert opinion. Her saying later that she had been playing video games since she was a kid completely contradicts what she said before that, before she had launched her brand. Also, she doesn't allow comments on her YouTube videos. Now, her argument is she got tired of dealing with the cesspool that is YouTube comments, fine. But she also doesn't respond to the many, many people, especially gamers and game developers who've made very legitimate criticisms of her points. Even Sargon, the guy she called a shithead and a garbage human, unprovoked from the stage on her panel, has made videos about her criticizing her points, not harassing her. The other point with that situation being that she explicitly violated VidCon's code of conduct, and the organizers of VidCon's position was, well yeah, but special circumstances because Anita told us this guy has 
and harassing her, and women are subject to far greater abuse online. Their full response here, which is patently untrue, just watch this guy's video where he mentions the cyberbullying he's faced, and he's only one of many. It really frustrates me because you need to apply codes of conduct equally regardless of gender. If feminists are truly striving for equality, then women don't get special protection in this scenario. She should have been treated the way a man would have been treated. And she acted in the very way that she was on a panel about harassment to criticize, which undermines her whole claim that she cares about harassment online, though I suppose she'd been fairly explicit about only talking about it in regards to women. Yeah, I did see the Liana K video. She's interesting because she's a feminist games journalist who Anita Sarkeesian fans attacked to the point that she almost quit writing about games. My main problem with Anita is not that I disagree with her points about games, it's that she's misrepresented herself as a gamer and an expert when she's not. She took an enormous amount of money from Kickstarter backers and never created a video series as she outlined it, that she acts hypocritically as at the VidCon panel, and she weaponizes her victimhood against others as well as monetizing it. I suppose another way to look at it is this. How would you feel as someone who's not a YA middle grade writer, reader, author, wrote pieces about YA that were completely cherry-picked, not researched, and they were painting a picture of the whole game as deeply problematic, and anyone who didn't agree with their points as deeply problematic themselves, and got their materials into classrooms and made an incredible amount of money off of it? We may disagree, but hopefully I've provided some food for thought. Also, Liana Kay has another good video about feminist frequency and her experience from a couple years ago. I didn't realize my boyfriend was going to jump in, and I realized he could be persistent, but he really means well, and that's just how he likes to engage with people. He really likes to debate in a way that most people don't, and assumes anyone who comments in a public forum like Twitter is willing to engage in that way. So she said, I think this Argon thing is interesting because she should have kept her cool considering she was on stage, but I also completely get why she reacted that way. I mean, she knows he hates her, and even if he didn't harass her, not sure what definition we're using, his fans have, and they're all sitting in the front row, and there's so many of them, to see that huge group of people who hates her, who have said terrible things about her sitting in front of her, and she wasn't prepared for it? Maybe what she said was wrong, although, to be fair, we've both said those words, but I've been followed by a big group like that, of people who hated me and said they wanted me dead. Yay, it's freaking scary. You don't assume that a group like that wants to just talk and listen. Okay, so like, she's comparing people going to a panel at a con that they paid to get into, and just like sitting in the front row, and they did not say anything to her. They just sat there. And she's comparing that to her getting literally stalked by like a gang of bullies when she was a kid. And also note here, she's not engaging with like the facts of what happened. You know, she's kind of like, oh, well, yeah, she should have kept her cool. But you know, we've said that stuff before. I'm like, that's not the point. She is undermining her own claim that she cares about harassment because she's literally harassing people on stage on a panel where she's supposed to be talking about how we shouldn't harass people. So she didn't respond to my argument about like how Anita acted. She just goes, oh, but you know, we've said that kind of stuff. So like, let's not get all on her for this stuff. And oh, also I was bullied, so I understand. And then she continued, and I don't know how to respond when you say that women getting cyber bullied more is patently untrue because obviously men get bullied too. Nobody's saying they don't. Nobody, nobody. And sometimes it's really, really bad, but intersections do exist. And women get assaulted and harassed in real life way more. I think it's hard to separate real life when we're talking about harassment. And of course, you know, people do write a lot about problematic elements in kid lit books, and it does affect the industry in advances, etc. Sometimes I agree, sometimes I don't, but it's their right to say whatever they want. In some cases, I think that movement has negatively impacted the industry, and in others, I think the industry has really benefited from those conversations. She literally is not responding to what I said. When she's talking about problematic elements, she's talking about, you know, it not being diverse enough. She's talking about all this social justice stuff. But those critiques come for people who are our avid readers, who are authors in the space, etc. What I was talking about is people will write some article like for the New York Times or the Atlantic and they'll talk about how young adult books are terrible for you and they'll like cherry pick and they have no idea what they're talking about. That's what I'm talking about. But she just like goes on this whole other thing and she should know better. She is an author in this space and she knows this shit. And I'm just kind of like, are you dumb? Are you deliberately misunderstanding what I'm trying to say just to avoid having to realize that I'm right about something? She continues, neither of us know her intentions. Maybe she is really a soulless person who wants to play a victim role and tear down perfectly fine games and make money off it. But I don't know. I think she cares about what she's doing and believes she's right. And maybe she oversteps and misinterprets things. I'm sure there are things she doesn't realize about certain games and everything she sees is through her specific lens. And I know how irritating that can be, especially when you know she's wrong about something. But also I think she's still a person who's doing her best and she is getting harassed. And that's a shitty thing for someone to deal with regardless of gender. So I can at least acknowledge her point. Sure, neither of us 
us actually know her intentions, like neither of us are in her brain. There are things that I think that we can infer from observable behavior, but fine, we're not mind readers. If she really cares about harassment, if she really thinks it's so bad, why is she doing it herself? Why would she do it in public forum? Oh, it's because she feels empowered to do it. She knows that everyone's gonna be on her side who is part of her ideology. She knows that the VidCon organizers are gonna be on her side. So she literally abuses her position and power to be able to harass people. And then she said, I deleted my comments because I didn't feel comfortable debating in public like that. I don't mean to upset either of you. I literally was not upset that she replied to my tweet and was like asking about stuff. At this point, I was starting to get annoyed. Like, I just feel like I made an argument. I presented the evidence. You're not engaging with like anything I've actually said. You're just like bringing it all back to like your personal experience. Like I benefited from her videos. Why do you have to shit on her? Because I personally benefited. Also, I personally relate to her because I was bullied. When did this become about you? You can have that experience. I'm not trying to take that from you. I'm just trying to get you to realize that I think she's a con artist. Here's my evidence. You can disagree, but like actually engage with what I'm saying. Tell me why you disagree. I replied, the YouTuber Bunty made a nice little video about their intentions at VidCon. I agree they probably shouldn't have sat in the front row, but they weren't Sargon's fans. They were fellow YouTube content creators, many of whom were women. In fact, a woman took the footage. Interestingly, all these women were erased in the Polygon article. To me, harassment is making threats, trying to intimidate and silence, aggressive physical contact and the like. Making videos criticizing someone I would not consider harassment. Yes, his fans have harassed her, but he consistently tells them not to do so. However, Anita's fans have done the same thing, not only to him, but to people like Liana Kay. And Anita has said nothing about it. So if she doesn't see herself as responsible for her fans' actions, I don't see why anyone else should feel responsible for their fans' actions, especially when they consistently tell them not to harass the people they criticize. And they didn't follow her, they just sat in a public place of which she was only one of the panelists. Again, I think they were a little naive to assume, given what they know about her, that she wouldn't perceive that as a threat. So I can see how the situation unfolded as it did, but I still don't see that as harassing her. I'm not saying harassment isn't a shitty thing to deal with, because from the beginning, even as I disliked her and her message, I didn't support harassment I see against her, a lot of which I thought was truly vile. I don't think anyone deserves that, but perhaps I've been following her in a different way and her supporters in a different way. And I honestly think if you asked her, she would say the harassment of women online is worse than the harassment of men. She also argues that women get harassed simply for being women talking online, whereas I would say that people get harassed for talking online. And I agree online harassment and threats are horrible. As for real life, I don't think you want to get into a conversation about statistics, so I'll just say that I'm not denying that women do get assaulted and harassed a lot, but so do men, and I'm personally interested in talking about crimes as they impact everyone, not focusing on one gender over the other. I know some people want to focus on the women's side of the equation, as Anita does, and I of course grant anyone who chooses that focus their freedom to do so, especially as I used to have that focus myself. Honestly, regardless of my feelings about Anita, my tweet was more directed at Polygon in their article, which misrepresented the events, and the words and actions of the YouTubers that I follow very closely, and was a terrible piece of journalism. I agree neither of us can know her intentions, which is why I tried to stick to facts, such as her getting caught in a lie. I will admit I find lying to be really, really offensive, so it irks me more than most. If she just said, I don't play video games, but they're part of media and I have criticism, I would respect her more. So you just heard what I wrote. Literally, I'm just responding to her points. I wasn't like, you're wrong and here's why and blah, 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 blah. No, I just like responded and I brought it back to saying like my problem was with the article more even than Anita, how it was like a terrible piece of journalism. So her response to all of that, which I just said, was just to say, this is sad. I was just trying to make a case for empathy. What? What does that even mean? How does that apply? Am I being not empathetic? She wasn't trying to have a conversation with me. She was trying to make her personal case. I was trying to have a conversation. She had asked me questions, then she DM'd me. She has some things to say. I'm responding. This is how a conversation goes. I was trying to stick to facts because I don't think we can read her intentions either. I'm just saying, here's what I know. And here's been my personal relationship to that information, how I thought about her before, how I think about her now, and the fact that I didn't like this article. Can I dislike this article? Is that a thing I can do? You can't even dislike an article with some people. That makes you problematic and trash. So I said, I just meant to continue the conversation. I'm just passionate about the topic and don't often have people ask about such things. So I'm sorry if I went on too much about it. See, this is back when I was nicer, okay? This is back when I was more like conciliatory and like trying to hold on to this friendship. So she said, it's okay. I'm passionate about these things too. I just don't want that passion to eclipse the fact that we're friends, you know? I think we're upset about different things. I don't really care about how people like Sargon or Anita act online because I don't know them, but I care about how my friends act. I come from a place of being really sensitive to vitriol online because I've been on the receiving end of it and it has really affected me. You have something that you're really sensitive about, that's fine, but it's clouding 
the way that you're having a conversation. You're just upset that you were bullied when you were younger and it's traumatized you. And to that I say, you should go see a therapist. And I don't say that like in a flippant way. What was the bad action here? That I tweeted critically about an article? That I engaged her in conversation when she DM'd me? Apparently she doesn't wanna have a conversation and the way I conducted myself in the conversation maybe is like what's offensive to her? You know, maybe the closest thing I've said to something offensive is my opinion about harassment and men and women. And you can like disagree with it. I even said, if people wanna just focus on harassment against women, they're fine to do so. I used to be like that. I don't begrudge people that. I'm saying I personally want to focus on it in a certain way. So then she goes, I didn't really understand where your hostility towards this person was coming from and it just confused me, but I probably should have kept my mouth shut and I don't think that I articulated myself well, so I'm sorry about that. I do realize other people feel differently about internet culture, but I just wanted to explain where I'm coming from. These conversations are difficult to have online. Then why did you try to have it online? Why didn't you just text me and say, hey, can we talk on the phone? I want to talk about this more. Hey, can we meet up for coffee or a drink and talk about this more. We're friends. You can talk to me in real life, but you slid into my Twitter DMs. So whose fault is that? Also saying my hostility toward this person? Like I thought it was a shit piece of journalism. And I think Anita Sarkeesian is a con artist. I don't give a shit about Anita Sarkeesian. Does that equal hostility? Not giving a shit about someone? Like where is my fucking hostility? Ooh, I tweeted critically about a Polygon article about her. So I replied, I didn't intend for any of this conversation to eclipse our friendship. I don't usually talk about certain topics to avoid conflict, but these days I often feel it's better to just have the conversation if someone engages me, so I see no need to apologize. Talking online means there's no tone, and I want to be clear, I certainly have no hostility toward you. I don't feel like I have a huge amount of hostility toward Anita either. I haven't thought about her for a few years, really. More toward the writers of the Polygon article for a lack of journalistic integrity, and toward the VidCon organizers for not honoring the consequences of their code of conduct and giving her special treatment. I definitely understand being sensitive of something that relates to you personally. I used to be like that a lot and still am sometimes. Not on a lot of topics, but when I am sensitive to it, there's a lot of emotions involved. I've gotten more used to debating people as of late. And so I'm sorry if I unintentionally came across as being too much of an aggressive debater instead of a friend in conversation, especially with lack of tone and facial expressions available in writing. And then she said, ah, uh, it's all good. I've always found that emotions and personal experience and empathy are useful and necessary in any positive conversation. So I do try to express that. Ah, uh, yes, personal experiences and empathy. So that's the end of our DM conversation. I felt like I had to keep defending myself. I didn't feel like she was really understanding me. And I don't know if it's really fine or if she's just saying it's fine. We didn't talk after that. I didn't reach out to her, but she didn't reach out to me either because like, I didn't know how to feel about it. I didn't know how to sit across from her again, knowing that I might say something that was going to offend her and like not know what it was. Because apparently tweeting critically about an article is like, Oof, just like unleashed this whole slew of shit. And I was like, I don't want to have to go through that every time. I just want to like make a critique of something or a comment about something. I chatted with my boyfriend about it a little bit after it happened. You know, I said that I think you really get swept up in the narrative because I used to insist on the same shit that women faced more harassment. And that even if they didn't, it translated into real life harassment. And that no one's saying men don't get bullied, but we're talking about women here and all of that. But like, if you had asked me to present statistics at the time, like I didn't have them. I didn't have arguments in fact. I just had a narrative. I just had a feeling. I just had my personal experience, which wasn't even really my personal experience. I didn't face any harassment online. One time when I used to game on Xbox Live, a dude sent me like a dirty message. That was like the extent of like any harassment that I ever received, you know? And I also said to my boyfriend, I think she got annoyed with me, but like, what am I gonna do? I gotta be honest, I'm too old at this point and I've been listening to too much Peterson about speaking the truth. You're right, I may have tweeted that publicly, but she chose to start the conversation and she needs to learn to deal with that. Maybe a month after that, I started therapy. And this was something I talked about in therapy, having this experience of trying to talk to a friend in what I thought was a really reasonable way and seeing how she reacted and trying to figure out how to go forward and, and be honest, knowing that it might mean I was gonna lose a bunch of friends. So then Charlottesville happened. 